Hey, welcome back. So in the first part of this 3D printer mega re-review, I really only got to look at four 3D printers because I spent also a lot of time talking about the, the grading key and how these 3D printers were going to be graded. I think this is something I'm going to use for 3D printing reviews going forward, but this time we'll cram in a whole bunch of printers. Let's talk about seven different 3D printers. And as I promised, we're starting with one that I should have maybe given higher marks to the first time I reviewed it. So let's get straight back into it. <music> Degoma Neva 3D printer is actually still being used every day in this household. In fact, I had to pause it to do this video because my kids are using this 3D printer right now. I took this 3D printer and handed it to my kids. I taught them how to use it. And at the time in the review, I kind of poo-pooed it because eh, it doesn't have a heated build plate. And, eh, it doesn't have an interface at all. It just has a button that you can use. But you know what? My kids have been using it like crazy, and they've been printing me some wonderful things on it. So I think that I reviewed it a little bit more harshly than I should have at the time. For price, it's not as cheap as a mini 3D printer, but for capability, it's more capable than a mini 3D printer, owing to its slightly larger build volume. It's certainly not as capable as a CR10 or as other 3D printers, but it is more capable than a mini. And as far as ease of use goes, you know what? I'm going to give this one a bump in the ease of use, even though it's a very unconventional ease of use. It does what it does, and it does it very well. So good job, Neva. I'm sorry I reviewed you so poorly the first time. The Tron XY X5S 3D printer was built by a young man at the Makerspace and he took it home. Now, at the time, I kind of said, yeah, it's as big as a CR10, takes a little bit more work to put together. It's price, you know, yeah, it's price is what it is. Its capability is comparable to the CR10. Its ease of use is maybe slightly less than a CR10. I'm going to have to adjust that a little bit. Because after that young man took it home, he had to keep fiddling with it. In fact, we actually weren't able to get a completed print done before the review. It just kept dying, and he had to keep fiddling with it. And because he had to keep fiddling with it, I'm going to drop its ease of use and its capability because you can't actually use a 3D printer that can't work. And so its ease of use takes a huge dip. And in the end, this printer becomes one that I absolutely cannot recommend. It's just not worth it unless unless you absolutely want to have a challenge and that when you finally defeat this thing and make it work that you will feel like a god because yeah that's kind of how difficult this printer is to use it has the potential to be more capable in the hands of a electrical engineer but as it is i'm gonna just say i don't recommend it <music> And of course, this was in the middle of March Madness when I reviewed the CR10 and put the video that everybody said was clickbait because I said, hey, there's a problem with the CR10 and it ended up being really nothing. Yes, the CR10 is a great printer. Super good on price. Capable. More capable because of the size of the build volume, but that's about all that it's got going for it. And ease of use. Honestly, it's not as hard obviously as the Tron XY it's easy to put together but it's still a bare Marlin interface and that interface is just weird and confusing and I wish that they would fix it oh they're going to fix it they haven't yet and it's been years still it's it's a CR10 and you know the CR10 but honestly there are printers that I would recommend over the CR10 even if you need that large build volume so let's go talk about some of them <music> the JG Aurora A5. This 3D printer, okay, yeah, it's a little bit more expensive than the CR10, and it's technically not any more capable than the CR10. It's on par with it, but its ease of use gets a huge bump, and not just because it has a full-color touchscreen interface, 
which it does, but also because the filament detection sensor means that it'll catch bad prints before they happen, which I'm not sure if that means a bump in the capability or a bump in the ease of use, or maybe both, because that means that you will have more successful prints and it's easier to do that. I, I like the JG Aurora A5. The biggest downside to it is that it's not enclosed. Also, the other big downside to it is it's very big. All of these large scale 3D printers I can't have in my home, so they're sitting out in the shed and I'm not using the printers out in the shed because it's just not a good environment out there. I need to finish building that and it's just weather and things are stopping that. So JG Aurora, in my opinion, is better than the CR10 and I would recommend it over the CR10. At the time I had problems with it, but since then I fixed them. It's a great printer. And yeah, for a large, that's my recommendation for a large format 3D printer right now. You know what it's like. You see a cool new filament and you want to try it out, but as you're hovering over that buy button, you remember the last three spools of fancy filament that you bought, used for that one thing, and haven't used since. You could join one of those monthly filament subscription boxes and maybe get one or two of the cool ones, but you'll also be buried in more samples than you can use, not to mention the... Seriously, red PLA? It sounds like you need the 3D Printing Professor Filament of the Month Club. Each month you'll receive a generous coil of just the good stuff, enough to work with it, but not so much that you'll feel guilty later. Thanks, 3D Printing Professor. Wait, that's me. Join the Filament of the Month Club today. Then there was the Geetech 301 row stock. Oh man, it, it, it's a color mixing 3D printer. It brings in three colors and mixes them and extrudes them out as one mixed color, which means technically it can do a rainbow of colors in a single print. But unfortunately, okay, price wasn't bad. But ease of use and capability both get a zero on this one because it doesn't work. I've never managed to get this to work. I spent months trying to get it to work, years, and eventually I, I tried a ton of things, swapping out hardware, buying new hardware. I tried to get this thing to work. I really did. And in the end, I just handed it to somebody else and said, hey, if you get it to work, let me know, but mostly. And they've tried and they couldn't get it to work. It's the same story and it's just frustrating. So the, the as much as I want this printer to work because it's, it's potentially capable of more than any other 3D printer of its type with a single nozzle, it doesn't actually work. So no recommendation on that one at all. Ah, uh, now we're looking at the TiVo Tornado. And uh, yeah, a lot of people know about the TiVo Tornado because they're upset with how I feel about the TiVo Tornado. Basically, I don't like it. I got my TiVo Tornado from TiVo. The manufacturer sent it to me. And when I had problems and I reached out to them, they answered me, not at all. And then when I reached out to the community, they said, yeah, try this and try that. And it was all the stuff that I had already tried. Maybe I just got a lemon. It's possible. But in the end, this printer never worked for me. So while its price can be whatever its capability is zero a 3d printer that doesn't work is not capable of doing anything and its ease of use is also zero so overall this printer psh, and, and it might have just been my experience there's a lot of people who have gotten the TiVo tornado to work and they're very happy with it but are they happy with it because it's a good printer or are they happy with it because their technical skill got them to do it and they found a community and if anybody talks bad about it you're talking bad about your peeps listen i understand that but don't fool yourself it's not a good printer it absolutely doesn't get a recommendation from me i 
I tried out the FL Sun S, a DLP or a DUP 3D printer. I'm not sure what we're calling these things. Listen, short version. While I got it to work a little bit, it feels like it was about a 50-50 on whether it was going to work. When that first layer went down, it might stick to the FEP. FEP it might stick to the build plate. It's a light curing resin. It's a liquid resin, which means it's toxic. It's nasty. It's hard to use. It's just... Ugh. You can't use it with kids around. I have not found a DUP printer that I like. Now, again, part of that is probably because of that, I think, 50-50 chance of any print working with it. I just am not having a good experience. That said, there is some technology on the horizon that I'd like to see, the carbon. And then Michigan, University of Michigan, came up with a way of, of doing light interference so that it doesn't cure on the film it cures off the film and if you want to know more about that i'll put a link in the blog that you can check out because i think it's fascinating i want to get my hands on one of those 3d printers that might turn me around to these printers but for the most part let's let's break it down price not super great but not bad that they're they're getting a lot cheaper capability while it's capable of super high resolution it's because of that peel and down, peel and down, peel and down process. And the fact that it's only 50%, I'm going to give its capability a serious knock. Again, if it doesn't work, it's not capable. However, ease of use. The FL Sun got a huge ease of use because its interface is great. Its Wi-Fi is great. Its software is not great. Could use some help. But surprisingly, I wish that more... Uh, FFF 3D printers had user interfaces like we're seeing on these light curing resin 3D printers. Still, overall, not a recommendation from me just because of my frustration of using it, but I'm open to changing that idea with the right DUP 3D printer in the future. University of Michigan. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.